Tonight, making voting accessible to everyone. We'll introduce you to an organization doing just that. Plus, how Wisconsin communities are preparing as the CDC nears the finish line on approving vaccines for kids. And a school district in Lake County is counting on voters to say yes to a referendum and a multi-million dollar plan to upgrade their schools. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Welcome to the CBS 3 News at 6. We are taking a live look at City Hall in downtown Duluth. There is still time to cast your general election ballot before the polls close at 8 o'clock. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Briggs Le Savage. Thanks for joining us. As many get out to vote today, many of us may have had an easier time casting our ballot than others. Minnesota disability advocates say statewide there are still some big issues when it comes to polling place accessibility. That's why a new organization called Able to Vote was born this year, now with a big mission ahead of them. CBS 3's Abigail Smith joins us live now from a Duluth polling place. Abby, what's Able to Vote's mission all about? Well, Kristen Briggs, it's a Minnesota organization founded by people with disabilities, hoping to connect with others facing similar obstacles with resources that they need to vote. Simple ways even include pointing out polling locations with ADA accessible parking, out, like here outside of this downtown Duluth library. As you voted Tuesday, it was likely a pretty quick experience. In and out of the polling place in maybe just a few minutes. Easy to forget the challenges others may face taking on that very same task. Issues that Executive Director of Able to Vote, Grace Goker Littlefield, says has to be addressed. At this point, it's a demographic that isn't as uh, reached out to or welcomed into the civic sphere. And so we just want to make that world a little bit more, again, welcoming and um, hospitable to, to folks with disabilities. The new organization aims to help people with disabilities cast their ballot in Minnesota. They say data from 2018, the last midterm election, shows Minnesota has a turnout gap between eligible voters with disabilities and those without of about 19 and a half percent. Why? David Fenley with Minnesota Disability Council says it's because accessibility at the polls is severely lacking. A polling site that doesn't have disability parking or a polling site that has disability parking that's full or a polling site that doesn't have an accessible entrance or a polling site that uh, the accessible voting machine hasn't been set up or hasn't been set up properly. These are just some of the issues listed that Able to Vote wants to raise awareness about as well as inform people about what they can do so their votes are counted and their voices are heard. Each person is different um, for the most part in terms of what challenges they face. And so that's kind of why we exist too is because the lives of, of voters with disabilities can be complex and we want to provide person-centered solutions for voters. An effort that Fenley commends, saying the efforts of Able to Vote not only brings awareness to the topic, but takes action that lasts for years to come. Organizations like this keep the conversation going, both about accessibility and about the importance to vote for folks with disabilities. Littlefield says, Littlefield says they hope by 2024 they can serve other states as well. Certainly an important cause there. Abigail Smith reporting live for us from the Duluth Public Library. Thank you, Abby. And as we mentioned, many people are out voting in Duluth's general election today. You can cast your votes for several city council seats. There are two open at-large seats on the city council. Three candidates are running for that one. They are Azreen Owl, Therese Tomonic, and Joe McCor. In District 2, Mike Mayo is running against Dave Zabracki. District 2 includes Congdon, Endian, and the Kenwood neighborhoods, plus the UMD area. And in District 4, incumbent Renee Van Nett is running against former city councilor Howie Hansen. The district includes Duluth Heights, Piedmont, and the Hillside neighborhoods. There are a number of seats up for grabs on the Duluth School Board as well. Three candidates are vying for two open at-large seats. Incumbent Kelly Durek Etter is taking on newcomers Amber Sadowski and Lauren Martell. Voters can choose two names on the ballot to fill those seats. 
For District 1, Dana Krivogorski is challenging incumbent Rosie Loeffler Kemp. And in District 4, Jill Lofald is looking to hold on to her seat. She is running unopposed. For all the latest election results as they come in, head over to our website, cbs3duluth.com. You can download our mobile app to receive alerts and keep up to date minute by minute. Of course, we'll also be bringing you the latest on air tonight at 10. And tonight, voters in Lake County are deciding if they want to invest tens of millions of dollars into local schools. The Lake Superior School District will have a two-question referendum on their ballot. The first asks if they want to dedicate $44 million to upgrade the Minnehaha Elementary School in Two Harbors and William Kelly School in Silver Bay. Because the district's debt from building the new Two Harbors High School expired, this would not have an extra impact on residents' property taxes. They'll also decide if they want to spend more than $7 million to update athletic facilities in the district. This investment would cost someone with a $200,000 home about three extra dollars a month on their property taxes. Question one must pass in order for question two to pass. Well, Dave, our friends in the UP sure had some snowfall, huh? Yeah, and it really depends on where you were is how much you got because I've had reports coming in from Ironwood itself, some neighborhoods only an inch, others as much as four, another one at two and a half. All right. So yeah. the rest of the UP is like that as well. And because of that UP snow, National Weather Service office in Marquette tells people to take it easy on the roadways here tonight. Cogeba County is marked off in red. That's because NWS Marquette says hazardous driving alert, special weather statement. Do take it easy tonight, even though the snow totals may have gone as high as six to eight inches in the blue zone there on the map of the UP. Any little bit makes things slippery, especially the first time out once we get our driving skills dusted off once again. Well, a dusting of snow is still possible tonight for much of the area here. The UP might make another inch, a dusting for Iron Rangers who managed to get about an inch or so there as well. Cooler high pressure coming in is going to bring back the sun tomorrow, but temperatures will stay cool enough to support the snow. And that means overnight lows then tonight into the 20s. That's why flurries are still possible. Then tomorrow, the high pressure brings back sunshine, but the high temp of 39 could keep the snow in place for at least Wednesday. But by Thursday, a warm spell begins, and I think a lot of this snow will go the same way vampires go when the sun comes out, back into the atmosphere. We'll talk about a warming trend and how long it lasts coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Wisconsin's health department says they are prepared to vaccinate young children once the CDC gives them the green light, and that could mean as early as this week. CBS 3's Rob Cole spoke with health leaders in Ashland County to learn how they are gearing up. While waiting for the full CDC approval, Ashland County health officials say they've started to lay the groundwork to roll out vaccines. They say they've already ordered enough doses to vaccinate children 5 to 11 in their county if they're vaccinated as this, at the same rate as adults. Now, for Ashland County, that's more than 300 doses. Officials say they can order more if the vaccination rate goes up. Health officials say they're urging parents to get their children vaccinated by emphasizing the strict testing in the approval process. Developing new vaccines is a very thorough and careful process. Um, safety is the top priority during all phases of vaccine development, the approval of the vaccine, and then the actual use of the vaccine. Now, to administer the vaccines, the health department says they'll work with health care providers, pharmacies, and public schools. Ashland County officials say they expect there will be 10 different locations within the county for kids to get vaccinated. It will be free, and you won't need to share insurance information. Parents will also be required to sign a consent form. All right, thanks, Rob. The Ashland County Health Department will contact parents through the public school system They'll also be providing updated vaccine information on their social media. Governor Tim Walz announced a new alternative care system, a site rather, in Minnesota. It's part of his plan to relieve hospitals from pandemic overload. Benedictine St. Gertrude's, a senior living home in Shakopee, will take up to 30 patients from metro area hospitals. This comes as staffing and bed shortages make it difficult to transfer long-term care patients throughout the state. The site will treat patients who no longer need hospital-level care but cannot go home yet. In other news tonight, the name of the jurors in Derek Chauvin's trial are now public. The judge released those names yesterday. The 10 jurors convicted, of the former Minneapolis, uh, convicted the former Minneapolis police officer of murder in the death of George Floyd. 
The judge also released the names of the alternates who watched the trial but did not deliberate, along with questionnaires they filled out during jury selection. Several news organizations filed a request shortly after the trial to make those names public. Some jurors have spoken out since their verdict back in April. Opening arguments were heard this morning in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse stands accused of killing two men and wounding a third during protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Those protests broke out following the police shooting of Jacob Blake last summer. His attorneys claim he was in fear for his life when he pulled the trigger. Twenty jurors, eleven men and nine, excuse me, eleven women and nine men heard those opening arguments today. One person of color was selected for the jury. Researchers have found the racial composition of a jury can have an impact on the outcome. Rittenhouse now faces charges of reckless homicide, intentional homicide, and attempted intentional homicide. If convicted, he faces life behind bars. Still to come on Live Local, CBS3, as the president makes strides to curb climate change, states are wondering how they can minimize their carbon footprint. Where Minnesota stands next. Today's record high is 71, set in 19.3. And the high temp we got at the airport this afternoon, 38, a little cooler than normal. Likely we'll stay that way through tomorrow, but then a warm-up comes. How warm will we get for the weekend? I'll show you with my seven-day forecast coming up right after the break. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. From value price softeners to the world's best and even salt free, no one has more solutions than Culligan to customize the best filtration for your home. The only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Got a favorite color? For these young artists, it's red. Painting the canvas with our secret mix of seasonings. Classically schooled, the tradition continues. Heart attacks and strokes happen, even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. Heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. Eric Paulson here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. The Royal Enfield Bullet was designed in 1955 and not updated until 2008. It takes an experienced hand to keep one running. I've ridden in the rain and the snow, but prefer not to. That's why motorcycles and meteorology go together so well. It also takes an experienced hand to make an accurate riding forecast. As our region's longest serving meteorologist, I think I have the touch needed to get it right. Watch Dave Anderson weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. I'm Nora O'Donnell in our nation's capital. We're here at the White House with the President of the United States. Thanks for having me. We will witness yet another moment in history. Hey, Watson, the game's afoot. And I got the shining at 30,000 feet. We did the job thing. This is Vegas Tower coming. Unfortunately, there's nobody allowed to answer. I wouldn't say that. You asked us. You two believe this guy framed David Hodges. It's a theory. We're wrong if that's the ball game. We can't hide anymore, Gil. I think they finally made a mistake. And your CSI Vegas, Wednesday, 10 and Central on CBS and screening on Paramount+. Plus. Get your news on the go. The CBS 3 mobile app. CBS 3 Sports is brought to you by St. Luke's. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson.
No in the UP. That's where the totals were the heaviest. Iron Rangers got a bit, and it's trying to stick there to the tune of about an inch. But in the Upper Peninsula, a lot of the fringes of the system went about two to four inches. And it did spill a little bit over into Iron County, Wisconsin. So Hurley just like their neighbors, Ironwood. About two to four in that zone. The heart of the system, four to eight, just north of Iron River and south of Houghton. Uh, I think there's still a chance for another inch on those totals as we go through the night as the trough of low pressure continues to work through our region and even could get a couple more flurries for Wisconsin and Minnesota as well. But then tomorrow, high pressure takes over. The sky will clear, and though it won't warm up immediately by the weekend, it will get warm enough to melt pretty much all of the snow that we got over the last day or so. Current conditions, we start there with the here and now first. 35 degrees at the airport, 54% for the relative humidity with a northwest wind going 9 miles per hour. Air pressure, 30.35 inches of mercury. And now from the barometer readings, we go to the thermometer readings and we see it's running 30 to 31 in the UP, 34 to 37 in northern Wisconsin, 37 being the most common reading from Ashland to La Pointe and then swinging over towards uh, Superior. In Minnesota, numbers go from 28 up the Gunflint Trail to 36 around Moose Lake and Big Fork. So temperatures tonight likely will dip into the 20s for everybody and we'll get into the 30s for the most part tomorrow before we do start to warm up on Thursday towards warmer than normal levels. Doppler map right now shows trough of lower pressure still working through the UP across the lake and into the arrowhead of Minnesota. It's creating more clouds than anything right now, but from those clouds, still seeing a couple of spotty snow showers in the UP towards Gogeba County, the Bayfield Peninsula, and parts of Lake County in Minnesota. So we're not done with it yet, but by tomorrow, that trough of low pressure should migrate well to the east. Higher pressure advancing from Canada will keep temperatures cool and start to clear up the sky. So that's the front end of the high, bringing in a northerly wind. The back half, as it gets farther to the south by Thursday, will spin in milder conditions back into the 40s, even 50s, and keeping low pressure systems at bay. So it'll be sunny and dry from Thursday through the weekend. And uh, yeah, not too bad as far as those temps go, unless you're a snow fan and want to hold on to what we've received. Tonight, Minnesotans get 20% chance for more flurries, low temps in the 20s. Wisconsin and Michigan, your low temp range goes 20 to 26 with a 30 to 40% chance for a little more light snow. And like we mentioned, maybe another inch towards the UP. Tomorrow, sunshine breaks out in the afternoon, especially Wisconsin, Michigan numbers 37 to 40. Minnesota numbers about, well, there you go, 37 to 40, mostly sunny sky. Mostly sunny sky continues to dominate our sky through Saturday. High temps get into the mid-40s Thursday, low 50s Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Next rain chance, next snow chance may not be here until next Tuesday. What a difference in temperatures, hey? I mean, 50s? <laughs> yeah, 50s in November. Maybe my bike isn't being put away quite yet. <laughs> there you go, Dave. Get a little extra time on her. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Well, today, President Joe Biden and global leaders met in Scotland to make a pledge to slow climate change. It's a goal that Minnesota leaders embarked on 16 years ago. The goal is to reduce Minnesota's carbon footprint 80% by 2050. Unfortunately, though, new data from the Minnesota Pollution and Control Agency shows that the state is not on track to meet it. The climate director at the MPCA says a spike in natural gas usage in the industrial sector homes and commercial properties is part of that problem in the state. We can do this if we all work together and we all understand that we have a role to play and that we will all be impacted by climate change in one way or another. However, it's not all bad news. Minnesota is making some progress in some areas. Greenhouse gas emissions from generating electricity have dropped almost 30 percent since 2005, in part thanks to solar and wind energy. Alexis Bass joins us now for a look at what's going on in sports today. Yeah, so as, as you guys know, we are in the midst of football season. And after bouncing back in Minot this past weekend, the Bulldogs have a date with a top 20 team at Milwaukee on Saturday with playoff potential in the mix. And from the NSIC to the NFL, it is also a big week for the Pack, facing Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Iowa Real Sports next. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. CBS 3 Live Cams, brought to you by KohlerChev.com. Now featuring the Kohler Express deal online buying solution. KohlerChev.com, a better way to buy.
With the giving season just around the corner, it's the perfect time to add a new member to your family. That's why several area animal shelters are coming together for the Subaru Love a Pet Adoption Event at Miller Hill Subaru. November 6th is Catter Day, featuring all-day cat adoptions. Sunday, November 7th is Pup Day with all-day dog adoptions. There will be holiday pet photos and a free microchip with an item off our wish list. Join us at Miller Hill Subaru for this exciting event. With locations throughout the Northland and northern Wisconsin, Super One Liquor has you covered for all of your party and gathering needs. We have a commitment to deliver outstanding service, variety, and top quality wines and spirits. And don't forget the best variety of ice cold beer and beverages, all at the low prices you've come to expect. Super One Liquor. Come for the service, leave with the savings. Hey, Watson, the game's afoot. I got the shining at 30,000 feet. We did the chopping. This is Vegas Tower coming. Unfortunately, there's nobody alive to answer. I wouldn't say that. You asked us. You two believe this guy framed David Hodges. It's a theory. If we're wrong, that's the ballgame. We can't hide anymore, Gil. I think they finally made a mistake. The new CSI Vegas, Wednesday, 10 on Central on CBS and screening on Paramount+. Plus. Hi, Gail King here inviting you to join us every morning right here on CBS. We'll have the important stories and the interviews, all the news that matters really, and best of all, we'll have a good time together. We like to do that. And now you can find us anytime you want on the new Paramount Plus app. So we'll see you every morning right here on CBS. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> I know, but mom, don't skip your recommended vaccines. They help protect you against certain diseases, so ask your doctor or pharmacist about any recommended vaccines you may need. Skip the other stuff instead, like, I don't know. Skip the pants. <laughs> eh? They're already doing that. Nice. Hi, Dad. Hey, Kali. Yeah, so skip one of those mini Zoom parties. No, no, mom, no. Not our Zoom party. I lost her. I'm Nora O'Donnell in our nation's capital. We're here at the White House with the President of the United States. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. The Supreme Court building behind me is once again at the center of a monumental battle. Tonight, a congressional investigation sparked by reporting from CBS News. Our exclusive access to the presidential platform. We will witness yet another moment in history. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell from Washington, D.C. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. The Bulldogs are back home after sealing a road trip victory over Minot State last weekend. While the status of the starting QB is up in the air as it has been most of all this season, one thing is for sure, the dogs are feeling fiery as they suit up for another ranked battle on home turf. While UMD hasn't seen dominance this year, they have seen depth something that was largely apparent against the Beavers. Through the air, fifth-year senior and quarterback Garrett Olson stepped in the starting role, going 10 for 23 with 106 passing yards on the game. Accompanied by redshirt senior running back Wade Sullivan, who tallied two rushing TDs for the pack in his first 100-plus yards rushing game of the season. Although the playoff picture is being painted with the dogs on the pallet, the strokes of Saturday's game will reveal the true colors for UMD's postseason potential. We knew going in that we were going to need to rely on Garrett to make plays down the stretch from the football game. Uh, you know, Garrett Olson's a, a seasoned backup quarterback, and he was excited to get the opportunity to start. Thought he played well uh, you know, throughout the game, and, and Garrett's a guy that knows our offense inside and out. He did a good job adjusting on Saturday and getting out of mind out with the win. After Bemidji, you know, it was uh, obviously a, a tough one. Um, it was a great way to, to bounce back. Uh, good overall team win. Defense came up with a lot of stops. Offensive line per played played really well. Got some things figured out. You know, guys are stepping up and uh, going into this week. We have a good good opponent in Augustana, and um, we look at it as an opportunity to you know prove ourselves to the nation and um, you know come out with a win and put ourselves in that playoff picture. Weezy says all three quarterbacks will be dressed and ready to go Saturday. UMD has a 1-0 game day mentality going into this weekend with number 17 Augie. 
They plan to silence the noise of the rankings and turn up the noise at Mulaski. Kickoff is at 105 and it'll be live on My9 Sports Network. It's once again a big week for the Green Bay Packers as they prepare to head down to Kansas City to take on Patrick Mahomes and the surprisingly 500 Chiefs. Green Bay has been banged up and shorthanded recently. They were relatively quiet at the trade deadline today, but reinforcements could be coming back soon. Alan Lazard, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Kevin King, and even David Bakhtiari all return to practice this week. Bakhtiari, their all-pro left tackle, hasn't played since week 17 of last season due to an ACL injury. And Matt LaFleur hasn't ruled him out this week. Have you decided what you're going to do one way or another with it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in assuming you want the Chiefs to be guessing on what you're going to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, like I've said all along, David's doing everything he can and you know, we just got to make sure the timing's right and um, take it day by day. And when he's ready to go and we feel everybody feels confident about it, uh, then he'll be back out there. They're hopeful that Devontae Adams can return as soon as Thursday. You guys, even without some of their starting stars, they were still able to pull, pull off a massive victory against the perfect Cardinals this past weekend, not perfect anymore. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm saying this as a Vikings fan, but I kind of I kind of want Devontae Adams to come back. I kind of want the Packers to do well because I have tickets to that Vikings-Packers oh. game at Lambeau. And I at least want the game to have some kind of significance. <laughs> yes, of course. You know, the Vikings, I don't know if they're going to get there this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can only watch. say our prayers and cross our fingers. That's for sure, Briggs. Absolutely. Thanks, Alexis. <laughs> Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, it's election day across the Northland, and you still have a little over an hour to cast your ballot before the polls close tonight at 8 o'clock. And tonight we'll have live coverage of the candidates plus the latest election results. We'll talk about an out-of-this-world meal. Yeah, astronauts at the International Space Station recently enjoyed a taco dinner made with chili peppers that were actually grown on board the ISS. Really cool. The peppers were planted as part of a plant investigation back in July, and last week they were ready for harvesting and sampling, too. Humans have been living and working on that space station for two decades now, and the bulk of their meals are pre-packaged. But this experiment may clear a path for the cultivation of more fresh food items in the future. NASA says it was one of the longest and most challenging plant experiments ever attempted on board the orbiting laboratory. And from the looks of it, it seems like it could be one of the tastiest as well. Yeah, all, uh, tacos on <laughs> Earth, tacos on, in space. Tacos anywhere are yeah. a good, always a good thing. <laughs> well, Dave, any snow flying tonight? It could still be in the UP and up on the range, but here in Duluth, the electric judge has told me this morning at about 7.15 a.m. to keep on coming people need to vote. And if we could vote on this weather, I think a lot of people would approve of temperatures <laughs> in the 50s by the weekend. I think so. We'll see you at 10 o'clock.